We wanted to talk about a bedding area setup and cutting and what I'm actually doing in the woods and I think uh, some of these tactics and strategies, concepts, will you'll be able to take back to your own. You know, right here at the end of February, February 27th, it's a great time to cut and get out the woods, especially with their bedding areas. And this is an area that we have our eyes set on. I actually passed up 45, a five-year-old. I end up shooting later right up there with a bow. And it was just early in the season. I wanted to see what else was out there and ended up shooting them later during gun season with a bow, which uh, was pretty cool. And I was happy to get them. But we had a lot of uh, big bucks around here. Isaac, bow was around here. Uh, Dylan, I'm probably forgetting some, but uh, Dylan remembers more bucks than I do, it seems like sometimes, but we had really good in here. What I like about this, we were working all the way up at the head of the hollow. We talked about that from our progression of wild ha wildlife habitat improvements with that edge habitat, switchgrass, pollinators, coming into the edge, we have sumacs and apple trees. That also extends right up here, so we're going looking up the hollow right here. So we spent a lot of time over cuttings over here yesterday. I spent a tank of gas, I spent a tank of gas right up here and then that transferred down into here. And so what I'm trying to accomplish, big thing is removing canopy. So I'm focusing on big uh, timber to remove canopy. I'm really focusing on the aspen that we have. The aspen's great because you get about 7,000 shoots per acre. All that's rabbit cover, it's also grouse cover, uh, really good deer cover and deer browse, deer food, and so it's very prolific and it's uh, one of my favorite species that we have out here. So that's that involves in that cutting this one and over here really paid attention to those big mature aspen so that was first now when we're looking at these cuttings we have a huge hole in the skylight up up in the canopy right here i have one more hickory that i need to take down right over here and that'll open up this sky right here we have a big hole coming into these cuttings we have a giant sky over, hole in the sky right up here that will allow sunlight to come in here. So we're getting sunlight from both angles back in here. And then we have another big opening up there that's probably about a quarter acre. And then we have up on the edge and then all the way at the top. So all these, all these holes have sun comes in, coming in from different angles. And when that happens, we thicken up the entire area around there too. And so that was first and foremost. You might have mature timber you need to get down. We've actually focused on a little bit of oak up here where we had leaning subordinates of white oak. They're never gonna produce mass, they're not a timber uh, production tree, so just get them out of there. They're just taking up space. But anyway, any way we could reduce that canopy, could be that you have mature maples that are poorly formed, double trunked, you get those down. In our case, we're blessed in this area. We don't have them everywhere on the property. We're blessed with these big giant aspens, so I'm focusing on those. So that means sometimes cutting around, like this big one we dropped right here, I had to cut some other trees down in front of it where it's gonna fall, so you cut those down first and drop them. So again, canopy reduction. We focused on a little bit of hickory in this area, a little bit of uh, oak, uh, also basswood. And so we had a variety of that. We had a couple larger cherries, but pretty much focusing on the aspen. And that was the first step, get sunlight in here and openings. This all relates to this pocket's 80 to 100 yards away from that pocket, which is 100 yards, 80 yards from that one. Across the hollow, about 80 to 100 yards. I hope you kind of understand what we're doing here, we're trying to thicken it up so that really you can't go more than 70, 80 yards before you hit another cutting and another explosion of growth. Focus on that canopy reduction first. That's the most important. And we had to get some smaller trees down before that. So that's where we got into our hinge cutting. Here's an old box elder right here. It was actually old. You can see the stems right here. All the stems are shooting off this base, but this is pretty old. It's just growing straight up. And so, Focused on just hinging that over. We'll get sprouts along this whole thing. It'll actually create growth and trees growing along the bark. It'll actually give it some more life now that we're getting sun to it. We've hinge cut some cherry, cherry right here. We have hinge cuts down into here of hickory, cherry, and we're not focusing on aspen because you really shouldn't hinge cut that. So we had some smaller aspen trees we cut up here. There's a hickory right up here that we're hinge cutting. The hickory is really prolific for a sprouter. Cherry does okay. Box elder is exceptional, but we'll have a smorgasbord down here. Now what we're also choosing to do, but think about that, that, that uh, the uh, hinge cutting. If we didn't hinge cut in here, not a huge deal. We're gonna get such an explosion of growth with the aspen coming in here. We still have, there's a large aspen right over here, a couple smaller ones, some right up here behind Dylan and a couple behind me. We're gonna get all of those out in this area. We wanna take them all out as a clear cut so we get that maximum regeneration and still we're opening up more sunlight. This is the bedding area we talked about originally up on the edge up there where we're 200 yards, 250 yards from the edge. 
We want does and fawns bedded up there. We have food over there and food over there. 250 yards that way, we have what's called the badger plot. And then this is our home plot up there, about 150 yards. So we want does bedded up top in those bedding areas we're creating. That next layer is we have room for younger, younger bucks, maybe more does and fawns. By the time we get down here into these flats, and this goes down a long ways, about a half mile from here where it's just all woods. So we want this to start where those bucks are bedding. So we have this progression of habitat change and layers all the way through here. And then off to the side, we have an open area oak, shagbark hickory. Might cut some of the shagbark hickory down. We're leaving the oaks, it's more mature. And then right along that mature side, that matured timber and alongside this bedding, is where we have a water hole we call that stand the beaver stand we have a really nice ladder stand one of the family traditions we have water hole and so we're right on the edge of this progression where we expect bucks down here we expect does up in the hollow and that stand location right up here is right off to the side so this fits within our progression of habitat improvements we expect bucks not to bed under the hinge cuts but to actually bed alongside you can see where i dropped the big aspen down there crush some of those hinge cuts we already had but those hinge cuts that are bent down they're just going to turn to giant bushes they're going to continue to grow so that's a really cool thing but bottom line is down here there's a huge variety of browse there's already briars down here you can imagine the explosion of growth and shrubs and hardwood regen that's going to take place in this location and this is that first cutting on the property we're focused on that junk timber the aspen trees that really wouldn't be useful in a timber harvest and then we're saving our oaks up here shagbar kickery some of them maple and so what that means is maybe 15 20 years from now we could actually cut up there in the oak harvest some oak get regeneration up here and then 10 15 years later we're coming back down to this area to cut some of the aspen that's in here in the meantime we could take a forestry mulcher to the pole timber of the aspen that's coming up grind it down we could do that in seven to 10 years and, and continue the life and regeneration in these areas. So I hope that makes sense how this pocket, that pocket up there with food on the outside of it, we have our layered progression of switch grass, pollinator blends, big rock trees is coming out this spring. We're gonna put some 30 foot circles. We're using deer fencing all the way around. It ends up 94 feet of fence. Fence will keep deer out so that we can put browse shrubs in like red osier dogwood, dappled willow, hybrid willow, all shrubs you have to protect out in the open like that. But then we can get that mix up there of good switchgrass, pollinator blend. We have those, those, those diversity pockets of shrubs and trees from big rock trees. Two years later, you take the fence down, you do it in another spot. So we're gonna do a couple there, one up there and two across the farm and in another area we're trying to big Betty out. That all layers back to where we're right now. We have stand location right up here. We have a stand location that'll go behind the house right up here. Redneck blind going in with a water hole. And so we're walking into areas that are through areas where we don't have bedding. Don't have bedding around the corner of the, pine, of the point. But that means we're gonna get a huge movement of deer back and forth through here. So I hope that gives you some visuals here of what we're trying to do, you know, largely canopy reduction. Unfortunately, we go to so many properties that they're making these hinge cuts in here. There's no sunlight getting to the hinge cuts and they turn into a bunch of dried out twigs down here that offer no food value, absolutely zero cover and uh, it's complete waste of the resource. You have to remove canopy first, then you work on this small stuff. Do it within an entire plan of layering your habitat improvements from top to bottom or side to side. Food where does are gonna bed, fawns, younger bucks, and then finally there's older bucks back here. So it's an entire picture but that doesn't mean you have to cut down the entire woods. Again, we're focusing on pockets. This pocket will end up being about a quarter acre. That one's about a quarter to a third of an acre. Up there, we've already stripped for a couple of years along that edge. Rabbit huts up there, rabbit huts up here. So I can kind of see the picture of it. it supports a lot of wildlife, but certainly it matches our whitetail and wildlife goals as we head into the hunting season. And, uh, and even just this timber on the ground right here. We had pictures of deer moving through here after the cuttings yesterday, and they'll relate to this fallen timber, let alone all the regeneration that's gonna take place. So even if we were cutting this July and August, it'd be okay. We're just looking for putting that structure on the ground and cover. That regeneration is incredible and diverse we're gonna have. And this area will contribute a lot significantly to where we see an improvement even up here, which we are already happy with this area up here. 
but we're going to see a significant improvement as we head into hunting season. And, you know, we talk about the hunt all the time, but it helps a lot of different wildlife species. And uh, we're going to really enjoy our hunting season as this relates to it. And this improvement right here as it relates to it just this season. It doesn't take years. Literally, it's just several months away is opening day of uh, bow season. And we're going to enjoy the effects of this cutting this season and beyond. Hey, I'm really excited to introduce to you our Hills and Thermals web class. It's something we worked on all year. We're trying to put lots of facets of scouting, aerial imagery, diagrams on the whiteboard to really teach you how the wind moves through hills and how you should find bedding areas, how it relates to deer movements in general, how that relates to, this is a bedding area stand, this is a food source afternoon stand. We really tried to put this together and offer you a complete picture of how to navigate hills and find better success consistently where you hunt.